morning. Is this on? Hello. How about now? Hello. How about now? Uh, we're going to go ahead and get started this morning. Thank you guys for coming in. We may have a few more folks that are coming in um, after we get rolling. I know we've, uh, Brandon invited the teens to be in class with us today as well. So uh, this is going to be the final, um, what, installment, I guess, of, of this, <laughs> of this uh, class. Um, so for those of you who have been here uh, every single week and been a part of our discussion stuff, thank you for doing that. Uh, hopefully you've been able to um, even go online afterwards and see um, all the different things that have been discussed. We didn't have a handout for you today, uh, and that's, I mean, it just, it would have been a lot of paper. So uh, today what we're going to do is, is kind of summarize the last several weeks and just go through the different uh, kind of what we've talked about in class. So in case you've missed some of those things and haven't gone online, we'll kind of give you a rundown of, of the things that we talked about in all those different classes. And then um, the shepherds that we have in town, I think Monty's gone today, yeah. uh, are going to share some, some things with you as well. Yeah. So turn it over to you guys. So uh, back in 2020, our leadership group had started talking about our mission. Ooh. That's a lot of feedback, sorry. He'll, he'll get it. You just keep uh, yeah. talking. He'll fix it. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and so we wanted to see if, if there were things that were getting in our way. Uh, you know, what, what kind of uh, challenges were we facing fulfilling our mission to reach out, connect, and serve? Um, and so we had, we had started that conversation and COVID hit. Our favorite, uh, our favorite pandemic, right? And so... As we, as we started moving through that, that was our focus for, gosh, felt like two years, right? Mm -hmm. um, so we, we come forward to, to January of this year, and we, we resumed that conversation. Um, and we wanted to see, again, we wanted to evaluate the effectiveness of how we were, we were meeting our, our stated purpose for being. And so... We started, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm trying not to lose my voice this morning. Um, so we started looking at questions, you know, what, what kind of things um, uh, you know, that were we not doing that weren't allowing us to fully utilize the talents that God has blessed us with. Um, so we decided it was time to begin looking at, at uh, topics, uh, and one that we really wanted to talk about first was the role of women in church. We've, we've had... Um, conversations among ourselves about this for a while and uh, I believe that we were starting to get some questions from, uh, from some of the folks who, who don't have a Church of Christ background as to why women play the role within our congregation that they do and why they don't play other roles. And so we wanted to look through that and we thought the best way to do that was to do that as a study as a family. And So that's what we've been doing for the last, you know, for the last eight weeks. Um, the insights class has been, I felt, uh, very well done. I give a lot of credit to that to Marshall. Um, he, uh, his insight and uh, knowledge that he has has been uh, uh, invaluable. And so um, I appreciate the fact that you were able to help us kind of walk through some of that because, quite frankly, uh, <clears throat> I grew up in a in a very small, small church in southeast Oklahoma. And when I say small, uh, there were like 30 people in it. And so uh, I came from a very conservative background. And so this was a, this was a, a little bit of a, a tough subject for me personally, just because my background wasn't in that. And so uh, some of my predisposed positions, uh, and that's over the years, Connie can tell you how different I am today as I was 29 years ago when we got married. And so it's, you know, as you study and as you, as you go through and you, you listen to uh, conversations and, and you start growing as a, as a, as a Christian. So uh, this study helped me personally a lot to get my mind wrapped around um, where we, I, I personally was, was comfortable and felt we could, we could do so. Quick, quick thought or quick question. Those who have been participating, at least in a majority of our insights classes, how many of you feel like that you've been stretched as we've looked at these passages and thought about things? In the, oh, okay, oh, that's awesome. 
I, I will tell you this, that, that is one of my key takeaways because uh, we began studying it as a leadership team I don't, at some point in the summer and immediately I felt like, wow, um, the different perspectives, um, looking at things, you know, Marshall's terms, the, the, the way to look at things holistically, what is, what is the cultural context, what is the big picture of what's happening around these couple of verses that we always seem to focus in on when we make the, you know, big decisions about how we're going to do things and really pulling our heads up and, and seeing it in a broader context, it has, it has been very, very good for me. And I, I was wondering how you all felt about that. So that's, that's pretty encouraging. It's good to see. Yeah, and I think our goal here has been for us to have a good in-depth study. Uh, and keep in mind, this is just the first of a series of things over time we're going to be looking at as we keep trying to uh, come up and fulfill our mission, you know, uh, as we've talked about. Uh, and we've all, you know, I think we've all been pretty well stretched. I mean, there's a lot of things that uh, I look back being raised kind of like uh, Chris in a small conservative church where my thoughts were a long time ago versus where they are now, especially when we look at uh, what we came up with uh, as we've gone through this study. Yeah, absolutely. So um, just out of, out of curiosity, how many people here are from a Church of Christ background and how many, okay, right? How many, how many aren't? How many grew up in a completely different? Okay. For the longest time, so Flagstone's purpose to reach out, connect, and serve, and our focus has been on people who are unchurched. Almost everybody here has been churched, it looks like, right? And, and so I know we've had, we've had several folks who uh, have come over the years that, uh, that didn't have a church background. And there was a, there was a time where over half of our congregation had a non-Church of Christ background. Um, and we've seen a little bit of a shift in the last couple of years where we're starting to draw... Uh, people with that Church of Christ background. So some of the things that we, we talk about may make you uncomfortable, if you, uh, and that's why we wanted to do the study. We wanted, we wanted to present information and then let you come to a realization and a, and a position for your own self. Being a Church of Christ, we don't have a central governing body. You know, we don't have somebody who's over the Churches of Christ, right? And so each individual congregation decides what's best for them. And that's that's kind of what that's that's how we try to manage this congregation is we do the best we can uh, and and a lot of prayer and leaning on God to uh, uh, to hopefully that we are doing the things that that uh, make him happy. And uh, uh, that's that's always my prayer is that he opens doors that he sh that he that he wants us to go through and he shuts the ones really hard that he doesn't want us to go through. And so uh, uh, we appreciate everybody being a part of this class. Uh, we hope that you have gained what we have uh, from this class. So do we want to kind of jump into a quick synopsis uh -huh. yep. of what each of the classes were about? Yep. Yep. So we're just going to kind of tag team this, kind of go through a quick summary. We're not going to hit all the details, but a quick summary of what we've done over these past eight weeks in each class, just so that we kind of have a, a fresh recollection of how we approach this. So we really started by looking at I mean, basically how do we study the Bible? You know, everyone has different backgrounds in terms of how we've learned. And, and sometimes uh, maybe that's just been through attending Bible classes and not really diving into the word much ourselves and understanding really how we're supposed to understand and read and, and research uh, the word. And so that's really where we started was making sure that we all felt like we were properly equipped. And, you know, the amazing thing about today and studying the Bible today are all the online tools that are available. And I, you know, I, I would tell you, as with anything online, there's, there's good parts of that and there's bad parts of that, right? And uh, so you've got to be careful what you read in some, in some ways um, because there's definitely people out there that can lead you astray with half-truths and, and different things like that. But uh, the tools that we have found that we can lean on and trust are those that just simply state what the Word says. And yeah, there are commentaries that you can get into in some of those sites. But also, uh, we found that, there, uh, that there's value, and Marshall does this often in his sermons, but there's value in going back to the original text the best that we can to understand what the words are truly saying to us. <clears throat> and then we went in on session two. Uh, Marshall and I covered the historical context of the uh, women throughout the Bible. 
And as we went through that and studied that from the beginning to the end, taking on the Old Testament, the creation, and the New Testament, you know, it, it became clear, uh, at least to me, and I think as Marshall and I talked about it for us uh, together as well, we can't, we can't forget the important role women have had from the beginning. And I think oftentimes uh, we don't talk about that enough, and we haven't talked about that enough. Not out of any particular reason, but we did remember as we looked at all the uh, different roles. Can't deny there have been roles for women that we just kind of not really talked about too much from the beginning through the New Testament. Uh, and it all started with Adam and Eve from the beginning on what the creation was and how men and women have important roles together, and that kind of went into the church as well. And then we got into the uh, the fun one about head coverings. <laughs> um, you know, in, in 1 Corinthians 11, we talked about women were prophesying um, within the, what we felt like was the worship service, right? And... and um, there was a big debate on whether women are supposed to wear head coverings where they where they weren't. You know, early in the church, men weren't required to wear head coverings. Fred helped us validate that uh, during the class that day, which I thought was excellent interaction. I really appreciated that. It it helped us understand that maybe we were on the right path when you when you kind of helped us validate that. Um, and so we learned that the Greek word uh, for Woman and wife and and man and husband were the same word, and so you had to really read the text and try to get an understanding of of, of what they were trying to say, and and so when you could when you could go in and replace those words, uh, it helped uh, try to get a a basis for for why the person was saying what they were saying. Uh, but what was what we really came down to the end was, although women were told, you know, you, sh you, you shouldn't wear a head covering and, 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 and men should, and, or the other way around. Sorry, the other way around. I knew I was going to admit it. I knew I was going to do that. Good grief. Um, what, it, what it boiled down to, though, is that women were actually playing some sort of a role in the service. Um, and so we wanted to, to make that, that point clear. And then we moved right into 1 Corinthians 14 the following two weeks uh, after we studied 1 Corinthians 11. And here we again see, uh, if you look at a scripture or two in isolation, that it appears as if women really aren't to be making a sound. That's what it, it's what it appears to be in, in the worship setting. But really when we, when we uh, look at the whole context and look at that whole section of verses, it's really talking about an orderly worship scenario. And... Um, and there's, there's different, you know, if you think about that first century church, there were the spiritual gifts that were very prominent and very evident. And then really that's how they were learning and that's how they were understanding at that point in time. And uh, if you can put yourself in the, in the position of one of those settings, you can understand without that kind of guidance of, of how to conduct this, this uh, thing orderly, that it would probably have been very chaotic. Uh, these things, these messages were coming to them and they, they didn't know what to do with it. So it was probably, uh, you know, everyone was just speaking up when messages were coming to them. Uh, and and uh, they were praying and prophesying um, and, you know, other things as well. And they needed a little bit of guidance on how to do that in an orderly way so that they could all be, I think the word that was used is, is lifted up. And so um, we have to look at this instruction. So... Um, there is an address to women, and the question was, is this for all women to be silent at all times? Well, we kind of looked back at 1 Corinthians 11 and said, well, no, they were praying and prophesying, and Paul didn't really, Paul didn't address for them to be silent when they were praying and prophesying. And so we have to apply that here just a, a few chapters later to help us understand what this really means in chapter 14. And so there's, there's a couple of ways that you can potentially look at this. You know, maybe there was a certain group of women at the time that was being particularly disruptive, and maybe that's what he was addressing at the time. Um, um, you know, it, it could also be that um, 
we talked a little bit about how they were to be uh, silent can also be interpreted as a peaceful, yeah. right? And, and really, that's an instruction for everyone to learn peacefully and not to be uh, causing conflict and uproar and distraction in a worship setting. And so those are some potential takeaways from the study on 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Anything else that you all would like to add on that one? Just a, the other option would be that Paul is quoting. That's right, that's Paul right. Yeah. The, Paul the does have a pattern in his writings of quoting uh, what the churches had said or, or had written to him about and then responding to that. And there is potential and there is actually probably a decent case around him actually saying, okay, you said that women are to be silent, and here's what I say to that. And so we, we also looked at it from that perspective, too, in that study. As we went through into uh, 1 Timothy 2, uh, as you all recall, you know, context, as we learned about, especially talking to the church in Ephesus, uh, what Ephesus was about, how you had uh, cultural differences between what women were already doing just in that era in time, right, between... Jewish tradition, this town in particular, uh, and really in particular as we got down and looked at what's that talking about, the teaching issue, uh, I, think we, I think we had a good discussion. There was you know, two or three different ways to look at that, and when you compared it to the other verses, you, you, could get in, you could get in trouble real quick if you just said hardcore, we know exactly what that is. <laughs> because I, don't, I think the answer was, uh, there were different things going on uh, in different areas. And as we looked at how does a woman teach a man, well, there were ways you could say a woman could never teach a man. But then if you look at what was going on in the church, we showed the scriptures where, well, there were women teaching men. Uh, and so uh, it was a big point of emphasis on well, where is the right role for that? What is the right conclusion for that? which is all the things we've been asking you to do and we've been doing uh, as a, you know, to study, to do it the right way and to do, or at least the best way for Flagstone uh, because as we often looked at the different interpretations, just to take a verse and say, woman can never blank. Well, then we turn right around and compare it to other verses to where, well, they were actually doing that. Uh, Timothy in particular was taught uh, by a lot of women in his household, right? Uh, so, uh, just another topic to where we really came up with, there's different ways to interpret all of this, but if you're going to just hang your hat on one thing only, might get yourself in, we might get ourselves in trouble. Any thoughts on that section of it? Well, just, it's important to point out, I think we were all decided on this, that 1 Timothy 2 is not describing a, a specific yep. worship service yep. setting. Yep. That yep. the whole chapter... Uh, is about just life, just how we live our life on a regular basis as men and women. Um, and it's the whole context is about uh, peaceful lives, getting along with people, uh, doing things in a way that, that uh, uh, creates a good message about Jesus that other people want to want to hear about. And so we get ourselves in trouble, at least in First Timothy 2, with trying to fit a couple of verses into a worship assembly when that's not what's being described. No. Then we got into 1 Timothy 3 um, <clears throat> and it was talking about qualifications as overseers and deacons and, and it kind of starts going through that about um, you know the, the Greek word for deacon was uh, I always diakonos. pronounce it wrong. Diakonos. I always <laughs> pronounce that incorrectly. Yeah. Um, but there are, other, there are other translations that call it servant or minister or attendant so there there are multiple names for that role um and, and so but servant is the most common that's used in the new testament um but in the middle of addressing those traits so he starts out he starts out with that letter saying an overseer should be husband of one wife not given to much drink you know you can start listing through those pieces right uh, and then he starts talking about deacons and how they should in the same way have these traits, and then right in the middle of it, he says, and the women. And, and so we really struggled with, well, what women is he talking about? Because he doesn't typically 
sidebar himself when he's writing a letter, right? When he's, when he's writing a letter, it's pretty focused and, and, it's on, and it's on subject. So right in the middle of that, he talks about the women. Is he talking about women deacons? Is he talking about uh, women elders? Is he talking about the wives of the deacons and elders? Or and, just women in general. Or just women in general, right? Yeah. Um, I think la I was watching, the, I wasn't able to be here last week, so I was watching the video. And Monty almost got himself in trouble. When he was using an example about why was that focused at the women, mm -hmm. I thought that was. For how many people? How many people caught that? I thought that was Monty. We're going to throw you under the bus since you uh, since you aren't here to defend you yourself. Yeah, it, was really yeah. <laughs> it was really funny. It was really funny. But uh, but you know you so you could take that you could take that that passage in the middle of that on on, on different from different positions. Um, Christian women as a whole. Uh, Paul was saying that Christian women are worthy of respect, not malicious talkers, but temperate and trustworthy in everything. Um, you know, it's, 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 like I said, again, it's the wives of the deacons. I even, in my mind, saw it as, as wives of the elders as well um, because he's, he talks about the elders, he talks about the deacons, and then he talks about what I think is the wives. Um, but, you know, who knows, right? It's uh, it's it's that that's why we wanted to study this as a group, present the information, and let you guys come to some conclusions through your own study of what this what this is saying. Um, do we have do we have examples of, of women serving in, in as a, as a role as a servant? Absolutely. Uh, Romans sixteen uh, is, is one. Paul even addresses um, uh, Phoebe as as a deaconess. Uh, at least in the translation that 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 boy the way that was translated, but it also was translated as servant. Uh, she served alongside uh, the, the leaders in that congregation to do things. Um, you know, we talked about it not probably not being a an all encompassing uh, Christian women in general that he was addressing there. It was more focused because he always, like I said, he doesn't typically have a sidebar. He's talking about. He's talking to a specific set of people and about a specific subject. Um, you know, does Scripture authorize women to be deacons in the church? Well, there's two schools of thought, yes and no, right? <laughs> and, and um, you know, so for the reasons for people that say no is that Paul specifically uses the titles of overseer and deacon to refer to those particular offices, um, if deaconesses were an approved office, Paul would have referred to them that way. That's, that's one school of thought. Uh, if female deacons were what Paul intended, Paul wouldn't have used the generic word women and wives. Um, in, 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 in also in verse 12, uh, Paul says that deacons need to be the husband of one wife. And, and so, you, again, that's, that's the school of thought where it says, no, women cannot be deacons. So let's look at the other side. Because uh, there's always two sides to every story. Um, if you're not married yet, you'll learn that. So uh, you'll fi you'll figure that out. But uh, but twice twice in First Timothy three, Paul uh, uses the phrase in the same way, uh, transitioning from his discussion about the elders to his discussion about deacons, transitioning to his discussion about uh, uh, the gr the the uh, uh, group of women. Using that phrase in the same way would indicate that this group of women held some type of leadership position. Um, if Paul had intended to mean deacons' wives, he would have used a f as a phrase such as their wives or the wives. It doesn't make sense for Paul to give a discourse about the character traits of deacons' wives but not say anything about elders' wives. He would have used a phrase such as their wives. Um, um, it... I don't know. So Romans 16.1, I want to get back to that real quick. So Paul uses the Greek word diak diakonos, I always say that wrong, mm -hmm. to refer to a woman named Phoebe. Um, he used the word for servant, deacon, minister, but in verse 2 he uses, describes Phoebe's role in the church of century. I don't know how you pronounce that. Yeah. Which century. seems to demonstrate a leadership position. So the school, the school of yes, that's, that train of thought says, well, there are specific examples and there are, there, are, there are things that you can read into those passages in 1 Timothy that lead you to believe that, that women could be deacons. So 
the big question is, is where are we, right? And again, we, we uh, being an independent congregation, we, we have to do what we think is best for, uh, for our family here. And so, uh, within the bounds of scripture, within the, within yes. the bounds of yes, scripture, yes. absolutely. And that's, if it's a, if it's a, uh, an opinion, then that's an opinion. We want to we want to base we want to base our our stance off of what we think we believe the word to say. Mm-hmm. So, so where do we go from here? Yeah, where do we go from here? <laughs> I think it'd be good to read yeah. that word for word. Yeah, I, that's what I was thinking too. Yeah. Yeah. No, go for you, it, Jeremy. You mind if I read this? Yeah, no, go so ahead. we've we've put a little bit of thought into how we want to convey to you all this morning. Where do we think we are going from here? And not not precisely. So don't get your hopes up too high. But uh, we want y'all, you all to be thinking about this, but we want to convey our message in this way. The Flagstone Shepherds recognize that the topic of the role of women in the church can elicit strong emotions. We also recognize that processing change can be difficult. Changes in a church, especially your church, can be especially difficult to process. We have not approached this haphazardly, this whole topic. Uh, we would not set out to change any practices or policies just for the sake of change. Nor would we introduce change because of cultural influences or perspectives originating from outside the church. At the same time, the leadership does not want to allow a fear of change or a preference for keeping things how they have been to hinder us from achieving the God-guided mission of this church. We want it to be clear that the Flagstone Shepherds believe that all scripture is God-breathed. We believe that the Bible is accurate and that it contains the truth that will guide us in living the kind of lives God wants us to live. We also believe that it is important to approach scripture, especially difficult passages, with as much honesty and freedom from preconceived biases as possible. We believe that as a leadership, that is the approach we have taken, along with our spouses and along with the church family, as we have uh, walked through this study of this topic together in a spirit of unity and love. Moving forward, the Flagstone leadership will be prayerfully considering potential changes in women's involvement in different ministries within the church from where we are today. If there, if there are changes to, t- to take place, those changes will happen gradually, and we will make an effort to communicate those changes with our church family ahead of time. We appreciate this family's willingness to study scripture together with us. We recognize that some may have questions or concerns uh, with this direction. We invite all of our, fam- our church family to share your perspectives with us, your shepherds. When doing so, we ask that you remember the Apostle Paul's words in Ephesians Uh, chapter 4 verse 3 to make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace we also ask that when you speak to others about these topics especially when speaking to those who may have a different perspective than you that you speak lovingly to one another and treat each other with respect and love like family and finally we want to encourage all of our church family to continue to lock arms with us and walk forward in what we believe is our god-given mission to reach out connect and serve uh, this community in our world. So there's no definitive direction there in that message today. Right. Right. Okay, so for those of you who are coming on the edge of your seat, wondering you know, exactly where this is leading, um, we ask that you pray about that. And then we also ask that you approach us and, and talk to us. You know, if, if uh, you have new insights from this study and you would like to talk through that with us, we would love to hear from you. And, and many of you have reached out to us throughout the course of this study, and that's been... That's been uh, excellent, and, and that's exactly what we were looking for as we did this together. I think another key thing is we very deliberately, and I'll be honest with you, they had to kind of pull me out of this. We very deliberately did not come into this class with decisions already made, that, and that was very deliberate. And so, you know, I'm kind of one where I need everything structured. I want everything figured out, and this is, these are one, two, three, four. And uh, they helped me. They helped me pull back from that and, and, uh, and just said, let's, let's walk through this together as a family and, and see where the Spirit takes us in this study. And I think that's been super powerful. And I think it's important, I, just like we've all discussed, and especially uh, I know from my perspective, is where we go from here. I think we as a group have studying for this for a while, and I recognize There are some things we don't do that we could do. Doesn't mean, though, we need to do immediately for our congregation. Uh, But I also want to be honest when somebody asks me, they would like to serve in a certain way. 
Uh, I don't want to be caught being the one telling them, well, you just can't do that biblically if there's not a reason you can't biblically do it because I don't want to stem somebody's spiritual gift. But as far as just making a big change, hey, it's tough. It's, I know for me it's tough just to go, yeah, we need to start doing that today, especially when I've done something for 50-some years now a certain way. Uh, but I don't want to ever be caught if somebody has a true desire to approach something that they would like to do, I don't want to just say, well, you can't do that. If in reality, that might be permissible. Uh, maybe not the right time here, though, right? That's two different things, just telling somebody you can't do something or we're just not doing something that way because of the comfort level for others or whatever because there's other passages to look at on each decision we make. And I think that's why... Jeremy told you there's not that bright line rule today of where that goes uh, because our church and our congregation and the feelings with that as we grow and look at these scriptures together kind of dictates what is the right fit for us. Uh, but there's a difference in saying we prefer not to do something versus well the Bible says we can't do something and we always are trying to remember that as we discuss that with everybody and those questions that come up because there's lots of different questions that come up. You know, first and foremost, we ask that you pray for us. Um, it's for all of the unity that our leadership has, we still have different opinions of things. And we do such a good job of being able to, to have those conversations. And, and I'm glad you read that last piece because I want to reiterate that. God's desire is that we have unity. And, and so the last thing we want to do, and, you know, one of the strong things is causing division. That's the last thing we want to do. And so um, now is that going to be, is that going to be uh, the basis for how we make decisions? No. No, because, because we think that something is wrong and somebody thinks it's right, both sides can give reasons for that. That's a difference of opinion. That's not division. And so um, we, we ask that you pray for us as we, as we finish up on this, as we try to decide what we're going to do as a congregation. You know, Paul said all things are permissible, but not all things are good. And, and we feel like we've been put in the position that we have to, to make, a, uh, make that choice as to what's best for Flagstone. And so we'll, we'll, take on, we'll take on that responsibility. And it is it's a responsibility that none of us take lightly. Last thing we want to do is, is cause someone to stumble. And so the direction that we choose, no matter what the topic is, not just women's roles, but pick one, um, we want to make sure that what we're doing is leading people in the direction that God wants us to lead. So we ask that you pray for this group, um, you know, pray for this church, pray, pray for the family here, that, that, uh, that the things that we do make God happy. That's what he wants to see from us. Any other comments before we, we have just about a little over five minutes before we wrap up here? Do you want to open the floor? Yep. Yeah, any questions? <laughs> so, you know, any kind of, uh, here at the conclusion of this series, any kind of feedback you all would like to share in the group setting or any questions you may have for us right now? And there's, there's a chance we may ask you to take it offline and we can talk about it offline, but we're welcome, or we welcome uh, feedback or questions at this point in time, given what you just heard today. Awesome, we answered all our questions. That is the quietest yeah, this place has ever been. Pam. Pam. Go ahead, Pam. Go ahead, Pam. For those watching online, this just a comment about being thankful for this leadership leading this study and, and allowing us the opportunity to challenge ourselves and, and challenge each other. So I'll hand over here. Yes, Jordan. Sir. Sir. So what's the next steps for y'all? Are you like how are you guys meeting regularly? This discussion next steps, obviously on this topic, but then what's the plan for other topics? Well I, <laughs> Thanks, two, Jordan. Yeah. 
So two the question part, was, what's our next steps? So what's the next steps for the shepherds yep. as, as a as a leadership and discussing these things and, and making a plan of action? And then also, what topics are we going to jump on in the future? Yep. So you know, I would start out by just saying that you know, we continue to discuss this topic regularly. A lot of open conversation. Um, I think there are things that very clearly we're all on the same page with that we think that uh, could potentially benefit the church to help us to reach out and connect and serve even better than we have in the past with how we've operated. And, uh, you know, we may be coming to you all with some of those things in the not too distant future. And then there are some that we'll continue to discuss and pray about and, and maybe we decide not to, not to do those things. And uh, we're just trying to figure <coughs> out not only where is the line drawn in the word itself, but what do we think would be beneficial and allow us to utilize the gifts of all of our members here at Flagstone in the, in the, the best way for this congregation to achieve that mission? Tom, Tom said it best. The answer may not be no. It may, be, may just be not right now. So if you see us implementing things, it doesn't mean that we're not going to do any, anything else, that that's the list. We're, this is going to be a topic that we'll probably talk about going forward every time we get together. I don't see that changing yeah. um, because we're not going to implement uh, drastic changes immediately, yeah. right? You don't, you don't want to do that. Um, it, it, we, we've, got to, we've got to build a comfort level. Um, uh, but again, just because something is permissible doesn't mean it's good. So there may be things that we do not do. And, and I think we all need to thank ourselves for coming together as a congregation for what we're already doing at Flagstone. We've got to, as we've just now saw, there are a lot of different backgrounds. And we take a lot of things for granted. Uh, but, but why don't we think back from where your background really came from on, so how many churches split over having women on a praise team? Mm -hmm. How many churches had a big problem over changing the carpet? How many churches <laughs> threw a fit? When He's we not walked? kidding. You think I'm, it's just serious, right? Yeah. How many churches really had a problem when we broke scripture and went from holding that songbook to having it up here? I mean, there are, yeah. you know, how many how many churches have had issues? Not just churches of Christ. I'm talking churches. Church, Church period. How many churches had a real problem if you would have let your preacher and his wife uh, have a joint discussion on the stage or actually do an announcement that things were already implementing, but hopefully in proper times. But let's not forget, it's all, every time we do something that may seem trivial today, it wasn't Very trivial at the time it took place. So, so you how, know, always keep that in mind on all these topics we go through. Absolutely. How many people have seen the, 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 the video, the sermon that Rick actually did on the chairs? How many of you guys have seen that? Go look it up. You will be amazed at how people, uh, humans, because we're human, right? And we're not, we're, not the, we're not the brightest people when it really comes down to it. Um, when the it comes, we divide ourselves over. The thing, yeah, the things we divide ourselves over. That's, that's, it's, uh, not only is it entertaining, but it kind of makes you step back and go, good grief. Yep. When we, when we, when we talk about things, there are, there are non-negotiables. And those are, hang on just a second, Dave, I got you. There are non-negotiables, and those non-negotiables are salvation issues. Everything else is what we've decided. And so we're going to lean on God to guide us through those steps. Jordan had a second part of his question, too. When, oh, yeah. when would we address other potential insights topics? Uh, I would just say the response to that is not next week. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we, we do kind of have a plan in our head. We just haven't really put down anything solid. But we are going to tackle other stuff probably in the same fashion that we did this one. But it probably won't be until at least next spring. Yeah. We're looking at springtime yeah. probably before we bring up another topic. Dave? Patience. Just this last year, they've introduced instruments and women out there that totally imploded the congregation. They had to sell the building yep. and totally disband. It Correct. just happened. It came to city area because of that same thing that you're talking about. <coughs> But I do want to say, he talked about a congregation that completely blew up because they started um, implementing different things in, in their worship service. Um, it's been said more than once, and I totally agree with it. When Paul says everything is permissible, but not everything is beneficial. I mean, he's quoting the Corinthians saying, you guys say everything's permissible. And he's 
like, yeah, not yeah. everything's beneficial. And, yeah. and I, think, I think it's wise uh, to hold that principle in mind for every church. We may find permission to do several things that we don't actually do because it wouldn't necessarily benefit the church. I will say this, though, and I'm, I don't think I'm speaking out of turn. You know, feel free to disagree we'll with tell, me in we'll front of everybody. That's fine. <laughs> but I think our leadership has uh, also committed themselves to not, if I can put it this way, not hiding behind that verse. Right. right. Um, because, because they're wanting to take, an, our, our leadership as a whole is wanting to take an honest look at our mission. We, we feel called by God as a church family to reach out to this community and to connect with them and to serve them. And if there's something that we are doing or are not doing that is potentially keeping us from fulfilling that mission, then we want to change something. Even if there might be a pocket of people or one or two individuals that say, well, that's not beneficial. Does that make sense? Like, we don't want to, we don't want to make decisions... Um, our leadership doesn't want to make decisions based on fear of how people might react. If we feel like this is really what God and his spirit is leading us to do. And so I, there, there's, there's two sides to that coin too. Yep. We don't want to kind of like Dave's describing, we don't want to launch a grenade out here and see what happens and see who stays and who leaves. That's not the spirit that God calls us to have. And that's not the spirit of this church family. It's definitely not the spirit of this leadership. And I hope you sense that. I hope you know that. But at the same time, um, we, and we said that in the statement, but we're not going to, our church is not going to keep from doing things or keep, just keep doing things the way we always have because it's the most comfortable. When right. we recognize, and God is leading us uh, in a direction that's going to empower us to connect with more people and bring more people to Jesus and bring more people into a connection with his church. And so we're, we're going to, you know, these guys are, are, are walking through that. Um, and that's, that's kind of the heart of why Chris saying, please pray for, for your shepherds, because we're trying to figure out the best way to do that. Yes, ma'am. I just wanted to say that I, I came when this church was planted. Yeah. And I truly believe that our leadership does go by what God is asking them, what the Holy Spirit, how, how it's, we're being led, and that, I'm not sure which one you said, the, what we're supposed to do, the doors will open, and what they're not, they're going to slam shut, because we've seen it happen already here. That's true. But we've also seen what happens when we do follow what the Spirit is. Even if it's uncomfortable. To, right. Yeah. What, what we're trying to do here. We're yeah. called by God, and I'm not saying this group. All Christians are called by God to reach out, connect, and serve, right? Yes. I mean, we really are. It, our job is to share with, with those around us what God did for us, to show them through the way we live how different we are and make them kind of wonder what's so special. Um, there's, yeah, there's, 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 no, there's no special pill that just goes, boom, you got it. Yeah. So we want to reach out, connect, and serve. And our goal here has always been from the day we planted this congregation was to reach out to those who don't have a relationship with God. We love the fact that people want to be a part of this. We love the fact that we don't care what your background is. We want all, all of us, everybody in this room, everybody that's a part of this family, to be looking at those around them that they can entice to understanding and having the conversation about God. It doesn't have to happen in this building. It can happen at your office. It can happen on the corner. There's lots of opportunities on the corner, <laughs> right? <laughs> Show those people God. Yeah. So we need to wrap up. We're already, we're already yeah. past our time. Yes, ma'am. What did you say? Please. I'm sorry. Mariette's oh. comment a minute ago was she was with us from the get-go when we planted this church. Uh, and she was just reiterating from her perspective, this is... Um, I want to change your words a little bit because I don't remember exactly how you said it. Um, that this leadership has a track record of going the way the Spirit leads. Uh, and, and, and God has blessed us because of it. We can look back and look at maybe even uncomfortable even decisions that, that the leadership here has made over the years. And God has blessed it. And we want to continue to do that. And so, you know, like Jeremy said, you, 
you may want some more specific answers and we'll have those for you moving forward. Don't think that we're just kind of like, okay, done, let's move on. This is going to continue to be a discussion. That one's having any hard questions, right? And, and I would say that there's probably <laughs> going to be some changes implemented, would be my guess, because of things that, that have already been discussed. But if anything changes, again, it will be gradual. We're not just going to rip the mandate off. And we're going to communicate those things ahead of time, especially for those who haven't been a part of this class and haven't been a part of this discussion. So right. thank you for your heart. You can come find these guys afterwards and share anything else you want to. Yep. We just need to get ready for, for worship right now. We got that in about 10 minutes. Thank we you. Appreciate y'all. Thank you very much.